Hi, welcome. Thanks for joining me. On this episode of Build Your Own, we're going to build, price, and option a 2020 Lincoln Aviator Reserve, as well as learn about the features and configurations. Before we do, however, I just want to remind you that if you find this build and price review helpful, informative, or entertaining, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. The all-new 2020 Lincoln Aviator slots between the Nautilus and the Navigator in the Lincoln lineup. The 2020 Aviator will rival the Audi Q7 and the Land Rover Discovery, among others, when it reaches dealer showrooms in the summer of 2020. The 2020 Lincoln Aviator is available in three primary trim levels, Standard, Reserve, and Black Label. Every trim level comes with a turbocharged 3-liter V6 that makes 400 horsepower and 400 pound-feet of torque which has made it to a 10-speed automatic transmission. Rear-wheel drive is standard, with all-wheel drive available as an option upgrade, except on the black label, which only comes with all-wheel drive. Okay, let's jump into this build and price review of the new, upcoming, soon-to-be-in-dealer showrooms, 2020 Lincoln Aviator Reserve. All right, this vehicle is a seven-passenger, three-row SUV. Makes good horsepower, 400 horsepower, 400 pound-feet of torque. That torque is real stout. I bet you that torque comes on real early. These new Lincolns look beautiful, right? They're talking about the, the captivating exterior design lines, and I would certainly agree with that. The interior roominess they're talking about, ample power. We can see it right here. There's, there's clickable tabs here. There's one, two, three, four. Let's click on those and see what information they yield. Okay, first thing we're going to learn about is the unique grill designs. It says the Aviator Black Label, Aviator Grand Touring, and Aviator Reserve models all feature unique front grills. Each of these grills capture and embody the experience and design inspiration of the Aviator. You know, here's the thing about this grill. Is that just the coloring, or does that look like it's an LED lighting? I can't really tell. Maybe it's just the coloring. But it sort of kind of looks like that. But if it was, they surely would have mentioned that in this little paragraph, and they didn't. Okay, here they're telling us about the powertrain lineup for the upcoming 2020 Lincoln Aviator Reserve and all its configurations. So the standard engine, the standard engine is that 3-liter V6 that makes 400 horsepower and 400 pound-feet of torque. All right, and that's for all the models. Now, this Aviator Grand Touring, which seems to be a battery powered electric uh, vehicle with paired with a well it must be a hybrid paired with a standard twin turbocharged engine it produces 450 horsepower and 600 pound feet of torque that thing's going to be a performer for sure thing is i'm not really into the hybrid systems here they're telling you that are uh, telling us that this platform it's a very attractive vehicle by the way um the lincoln aviator platform is rear wheel drive it's set up to be rear wheel drive that said you can still fit this configure this vehicle with all wheel drive and if you get the black label it just comes with all wheel drive as standard well the 2020 lincoln uh, aviator has wheel options they're showing pictures of three wheel options here they're just letting us know there's a that the lincoln aviator offers a number of wheel designs and sizes including several 21 and 22 inch eye catching wheel options several is three to five so they've got three maybe there might be a couple of more and they just couldn't fit them all. ah wait a minute ah ah no that's not it that's not it okay so they just showed us three wheel designs and and that's the deal with the three wheel designs and yeah let's move on I guess I should say that we're going to be learning about the other configurations along the way, which I did say in the beginning, because here we're going to learn about the Aviator Grand Touring. Remember, this Aviator, the 2020 Aviator, is not out yet. It's not going to be out for a minute, yet we can still look at this, and they're going to tell us quite a bit about the Aviator, and we can actually still do a build and price of the av Aviator, even though it's not out yet. So anyway, the Grand Touring, uh, it says this model combines the power of a twin turbocharger of that V6 engine, right? with a battery-powered electric motor to provide nearly instant torque, right? 450 horse, 600 pound-feet of torque. In addition to the five standard Lincoln Drive modes, the Aviator, Aviator Grand Touring has two more modes, Pure EV for an all-quiet, all-electric drive, and Presence, or Preserve EV, which stores electricity to be used at a later time. 
interesting. I wonder what the price point of that is going to be. We'll find out here in a little bit when we get to that one page. We'll be able to see all the prices of all the trim levels. Lincoln does beautiful headlights just like the best of them. They certainly do. Adaptive pixel LED headlamps. Uh, the adaptive pixel LED headlamps apply a number of groundbreaking technologies to appropriately place light both on and off the road at highway speeds. Speed-dependent lighting is designed to shine light further into the distance, and at slower speeds, the light array widens, helping drivers to detect pedestrians and potential hazards. I like that. That sounds smart. Adaptive dynamic bending light uses camera technology to read road signs and lane markings to pre-illuminate where the road is heading. Also cool. Here they're talking about the suspension of the 2020 Lincoln Aviator. Uh, there's an available, which means it's an option. There's an available air glide suspension, which continuously monitors vehicle position, position and weight distribution to help create a smooth ride. And then there's this thing called adaptive suspension with road preview, which uses a front camera to evaluate the road. And if it sees any irregularities in the road, like a pothole, uh, the system can prepare the suspension to help make driving over them as comfortable as possible. Also cool. The Lincoln Aviator, the 2020 Lincoln Aviator, has what they call the Lincoln Copilot 360 Plus. Now, what is this? This bundles a number of driver assist technologies uh, that include evasive steering assist, reverse braking assist, active park assist plus, and traffic jam assist. And then that traffic jam assist combines adaptive cruise control, stop and go, lane centering, and newly developed traffic sign recognition. So a whole bunch of safety technology going on with this new 2020 Lincoln Aviator for sure. Comfort is at our command. Uh, as we can see here, just like with the exterior details, we have a few buttons we can click here to find out some uh, interior details, features, uh, of the new 2020 Lincoln Aviator. So let's click these and find out uh, what the deal is. How sweet it is. Listen to this. Heads up display. I got to say it because I say it every time. If you watch this channel, then you would know that I love heads up displays and, if, and it also digital speedometers that come right in here. Now look at this thing. Look at the interior or look at the... Um, uh, the instrument cluster right here. I mean, that's all LCD screen. You got the whole heads-up display up here. Apparently, that driving the, the, the head-up display gives you information like standard driving information, available adaptive cruise control settings, lane keeping system information. That's pretty cool. Here they're talking about those Lincoln Drive modes for the 2020 Lincoln Aviator. Now, those drive modes, which we can see, is a knob. It says Drive Mode. Um, it can when you change those the different modes that alters suspension settings, even the ride height, steering, shift points in the transmission, and they say more. Uh, there's five main modes, uh, and if you get the Aviator Grand Touring, which we know, there's two more modes: that pure EV mode, and then the preserve EV mode. Okay, so check this out. Lincoln for the new 2020 Lincoln Aviator use the Detroit Symphony Orchestra to make the recorded sounds for the different chimes and the warnings and all that different little bells and chimes that you hear in a vehicle. The Lincoln Aviator is going to it's going to be sounds from the Detroit Symphony. Very cool. We got to I wish we could hear what that sounds like. I'm sure uh, people will be all over that. Okay, lastly up for here for the interior features, they're talking materials and craftsmanship, and it looks nice, doesn't it? It looks nice. Available rich leathers, carefully selected woods, including Santos rosewood and espresso ash swirl, and linear brushed and engine-tuned aluminum appliques offer engaging details that capture the eye as well as the imagination. Okay, this is cool. You can use your phone as a key. Now, Lincoln has an app like every other car manufacturer. Lincoln calls theirs the Lincoln Way app. And you can program your phone to act as the key to your Lincoln Aviator via a Bluetooth connection. And your phone will grant entry into the Lincoln Aviator. That sounds both cool and dangerously scary at the same time. Like, that could just go wrong. At any rate, at any rate it's an option. It's a feature. It's available. I had said in the beginning that uh, that the 2020 Lincoln Aviator Reserve 
well, all the trim levels, really, uh, all the configurations, uh, a three-row, seven-seat SUV, all right? Now, what is this? They have something called powerful third-row comfortably seats. Uh, two passengers can be easily folded flat with the press of a button, so that's cool. Now, if they're saying here also that, the, that you can configure that second row a couple of different ways, you can configure it with a bench seat so you can, in fact, seat seven people, or you can configure it with um, second row captain's chairs with a center console like they're showing right here. So you've got a couple different ways to go. This is, I guess, more the upscale way, and the other way is probably more utilitarian, I guess. Or it depends on what you want. The 2020 Lincoln Aviator can be had with the Revel audio system. It has a tw This is a 28-speaker system. I don't know what 3D audio really is, but it's got, got, it has a 3D audio experience. And I guess the end result, and I guess that's all I need to know, is it's an acoustic masterpiece, apparently. Almost every vehicle these days offers Wi-Fi connectivity. Uh, this particular Lincoln Aviator offers that, a 4G LTE Wi-Fi hotspot. You can connect up to 10 devices from up to 50 feet away. Plus, with an active Lincoln Way app, you can track your Wi-Fi usage. It says an active Lincoln Way app. Does that mean it's a subscription service? Hmm. We had showed up here uh, at the very beginning of the video. Let's actually take a look at the gallery real fast. So here they're talking about the light touch handle <clears throat> on the 2020 Aviator. The light touch handle allows users to gently grasp the interior of the door handle, and with a simple press, the door opens. When paired with soft closed doors, which is really cool, that's awesome. That's self-explanatory. The door, once it hits the catch, it can pull itself closed. Here they're telling us that uh, the Lincoln Aviator has aviation-inspired materials. No surprise there. From the leather of a bomber jacket and classic luggage to instrumentation and switches of the cockpit. The interior truly helps drivers and passengers alike feel as if they've taken to the skies. Well, then that would be scary then. We're not going to talk about it again for the third or fourth time already. For such a small amount of information, they sure have talked about this particular Grand Touring Hybrid a lot. We're not going to talk about it again, but we can see here's how you plug it in. Apparently, this is a, if you get the uh, Aviator black label, here's the 22 inch uh, black label wheel that you would get with your uh, 2020 Lincoln Aviator black label. Should you get a black label? I should be looking and talking about the mobile app integration, but look at the leather on the steering wheel. It is beautiful. I like the, the aluminum look and the, the aviation feel. I think it's nice. Okay, anyway, it says take your favorite apps with you. With Sync 3 App Link, you can access many of your favorite apps through the 10-inch center screen. We're looking at it right here. There it is. And the Lincoln Aviator. You can enjoy many in-home functions of Alexa with a Lincoln plus Alexa download. So those whole things, when they do the Lincoln plus Alexas and, and the Google, they basically do the same thing as the app does. I don't know if it would unlock your car for you, though, and let you start it. But, yeah, and it also comes with... Uh, with Waze, Waze is a navigation system, uh, uh, another way to do navigation anyway. The seats are gorgeous. They really, really are. Uh, they're heated and ventilated, perfect position front seats with thigh bolsters, offer 30 ways to adjust the seat and head restraint articulation to support one's neck. With the massages of active motion, stress melts away. These leather trim seats give the driver and front passenger an almost infinite range of comfort. They're gorgeous. They are really attractive. I like the design. Okay, let's learn about Lincoln Embrace. Apparently, it's the little touches that make the biggest difference. The Lincoln Embrace, a well-orchestrated sequence of welcome lights, both inside and out, greet you as you approach. When equipped with the available air glide suspension, which we learned a little bit about earlier, the Lincoln Aviator, the 2020 Lincoln Aviator, also lowers itself. Wow. Making it easier for the driver and passengers to get in. Mm -hmm. Okay, real quick before we jump over to the build and price. <clears throat> I just want to check a couple of specs. Not a whole bunch, but a couple of specs for the 2020 Lincoln Aviator. So let's do that real fast. First thing I want to see is what kind of packages just across the board. I mean, let's not think about configurations what trim level you know yeah there's the standard there's the reserve there's the black label blah 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 but what kind of packages in general can you get on the 2020 aviator there's a convenience package that's where the heads up is 
There's this luxury package. That's where those perfect position seats are. The, there's the dynamic handling package. That's where the air glide suspension is. There's an elements package, which is optional for the standard. All right. And there's an elements package plus, which is optional for the reserve and the grand touring. Uh, there's an illumination package that has those adaptive pixel LED lights in there. And then there's that Lincoln Copilot Plus, which includes the adaptive cruise control and all that there. I wanted to check the power specs because I hope I was hoping they were going to give us the the RPMs and the torque numbers. You know, what at what RPM was it making 400 horsepower torque? You know, that kind of stuff it doesn't seem like they're going to give us any of that information. So, yeah, we can kind of see that we know the standard engine is the V6 and the optional is to get that hybrid um, there's active grill shutters. Apparently, that's going to open and control, open and close to control the airflow. Uh, here, they're showing us the standard uh, handling, four-wheel disc brakes, electronic parking brake, hill assist start. Let's move on. Like I said, there wasn't much that I want to look at in the specs, just a few things. Okay, let's check out some vehicle highlights. Fuel tank is a 20-gallon fuel tank, 20.2-gallon fuel tank. Uh, on the standard uh, Lincoln Aviator. If you get the Grand Touring, which is the hybrid, then it's an 18-gallon fuel tank. 10-speed transmission with paddle shifters. Uh, this vehicle can seat six or seven, depending on how you configure that second row. Uh, standard is rear-wheel drive, with optional being uh, all-wheel drive. However, the black label and the Grand Touring get all-wheel drive standard. Right, we can see the wheelbase is 119 inches. The overall length is almost 200 inches. Overall height, 69.8 inches. We can see some headroom, legroom, shoulder room. Uh, let's see, let's see some headroom up front. Well, you know, there's a lot of pieces here. So, little headroom up front. Depending on how the roof is, you're gonna, it's gonna vary anywhere from 38 to 41 inches. Basically, shoulder room looks really healthy across all the rows. Hip room looks great. Leg room looks, I wouldn't know. Leg room is probably very good in the second row and probably not too bad in the third row. The Aviator is not very, not a super small SUV. It's a pretty decent sized SUV. So you're probably not going to be too cramped back there in the third row. Oh, here's where the towing capacities live. So you have a 6,700 towing capacity, 6,700 towing pound capacity uh, in the Aviator standard, the reserve, and the black label. Now, if you get that Grand Touring, or the Aviator Black Label Grand Touring, that's with the electric motor because that makes 650 torque. It makes more torque. Even though it makes more torque, it cannot tow more. Its towing capacity is 5,600 pounds. We can see base curb weights vary between the vehicles for as low as 4,700 pounds for a standard rear-wheel drive Lincoln Aviator. But if you got a Grand Touring, boy, this thing caught, will uh, weigh almost 5,700 pounds. Yeah. 5,700 pounds. Cargo volume behind the front seats, 77.7 .7 cubic feet. Cargo volume behind the second row seats, 41.8 cubic feet. Cargo volume behind the third row seats, 18.3 cubic feet. Total passenger volume with the Vista roof, 140.5 cubic feet. If you have the steel roof, it's 144.7 cubic feet. All right, you know what? We've gone through the specs. We've looked at all that. Let's actually go to the build and price now and go build out and price our reserve. We'll also take a look and see what the prices for all the other trim levels are real quick too. Okay, so here we are on our page, on our uh, page where we choose our configuration. We know, well, maybe you didn't know, I just want that regular base engine. I think for most folks, that engine is going to be just fine. So we can see that the base model, what they call the entry level Lincoln Aviator, which they call the standard, starts life at $51,100. The reserve starts life at $56,190. The black label takes a gigantic jump over $20,000 to be $77,695. No, we don't want to talk to a representative. $77,695. That's some ducats. Yeah, they should throw in the... Uh, the all-wheel drive. That's the least you could do. We are going to configure the reserve as we know, however, and we are going to get it with all-wheel drive. So I'm sure we'll have a, op, a, a place to do that. So let's, get, let's configure this thing and get going. Okay, so here we are. We have our Lincoln Aviator 
Uh, that is not the standard. It says standard. We don't want the standard. Hang on one second. There we go. Now it says reserve. Now we're sitting at 57,285. Let's choose. Do we want all wheel drive? Yes, we want all wheel drive. Paint? What paint colors do we want? We haven't even had a chance to look at them. So this paint color here is known as infinite black. Here's iced mocha. Here's crystal copper. We're just going to run through these real fast. Ceramic pearl, mm, maybe. Pristine white, magnetic gray, diamond blue, burgundy velvet, red carpet, no, silver radiance. I'm not really a fan of any of these colors, to be honest with you. I'm going to say, you know what, let's go with the pristine white. It's a $6.95 option. Packages, remember, we looked at some of these packages. Now, uh, this is already included. We've got the 20-inch wheels. We've got the 360 camera. We have the Revel audio system with 14 speakers, not that next one up. We have premium leather. We already have leather seats. Uh, do we want the uh, panoramic Vista roof, the Elements package, and the Lincoln Copilot Plus? No. I'm not, I don't really want the, the Elements package gives you that lighting, right? Maybe we can get the lighting, I'm hoping, as some standalone options. I don't know if we can. But I don't really want the Copilot 360, and I'm not really that much for the panoramic Vista roof, although I do like the power sunshades, but I don't want to spend $5,000 for it at the end of the day. It's just not that serious for me. So that's that. Here's the Reserve 2. This gives us, what, illumination package, a luxury package, uh, the 22-inch bright machined alloy wheels. And look, we can open this up to tell us a little bit more the... The font is very small, but uh, the lighting, the luxury package, yeah, it's $11,000. That's very expensive. This vehicle, they're trying to make it as expensive as possible, aren't they? Here's a trailer tow package. I know I don't want that. We can close that. Um, I don't want to spend $11,625. I don't want to spend an additional. Uh, we have the dynamic handling package. Now, what's all included in that? The air glide suspension, uh, adaptive suspension, adaptive steering. I don't know how much this is. Oh, this package included on Grand Touring, available on Black Label and Reserve 2. So to do this, because notice there's no price. Now watch, I bet you you'd have to do the Reserve 2. Yeah, you'd have to add the Reserve 2 to that. Cost you $13,000. Mm, I'm not feeling that. I'm just not feeling that. So we're not going to do that. The Illumination package, again, it's bundled into something else. What is it? What package is it bundled with? It's bundled with the Reserve 1 package. So at the minimum, we've got to spend $5,000 to even get this lighting if we wanted it, if I remember correctly. Is that correct? No, we'd have to spend $10,000 to get a few things we wanted. You know, we're going to keep this vehicle pretty stripped down. Although the convenience package with the heads-up display, mm, I'm on that. Oh, phone is a key, wireless charging pad, soft-closed doors. Now here's a package we can get that's not, you know, 10 $13,000. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. No, 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 no. Okay, so, oh, you still got to add the Reserve 2 group, and they give you a little discount. No. Wow. Boy, expensive vehicle, expensive vehicle. Elements Package Plus. Now, again, that looks like it'd be all right, but apparently it's not. Now, is that just an $1,800 package? Oh, it is just an $1,800 package. What does this give us? This gives us the heated and ventilated driver and passenger seats, heated and ventilated second row seats, heated steering wheel, heated windshield de-icer, and ventilated viso blade wipers. The reality is, is that I'm not really crazy about any of those things. It's the one package I could select, and I don't really want that package. Fine. The Lincoln Copilot 360 Plus, I thought we already had that. The luxury package, I thought this vehicle was luxury. What does the luxury package include? Real fast, let's take a look at that. Oh, those perfect position seats, the high-end audio. Oh, and the rear door sunshades. Now, this might work. This might work. Now, okay. Now, they're going to want us to throw in the Reserve 1 for that. It's $7,700. You know what? I've said no, 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 no. Everything's been $10,000, $12,000, $13,000. I really like the luxury package. I want the upgraded sound. I want the rear sunshades. I really do. And the Reserve 1 package, let's take a look at that. That gives us the panoramic Vista roof, which I didn't really want. 
Uh, it gives us the second row captain's chairs uh, if we wanted it. Packages, it gives us the element package uh, with the heated and, uh, heated and ventilated seats. We have the Lincoln uh, Co-Pilot 360. That gives us a whole bunch of uh, safety stuff. And what else? That's it, really, because the rest of it, they're just showing us standard feature stuff. Okay, I bit the bullet on that one. I did not back out of that one. I bit the bullet on that one for the luxury package. Let's take a look at the exterior. Uh, okay, so these wheels are available, these 20-inch wheels. These 22-inch wheels, we're not going to get them because that's going to come with, you know, probably an upgrade. I don't see a price tag on that. We're not going to mess with it. And, and they're just okay. They're just okay. On the interior, oh, let's see what the interior, let's, um, let's see what we might want for an interior color real fast. Uh, no, not the ebony roast, not the slate gray, certainly not that sandstone. I can promise you that we don't want sandstone. No sandstone. So black leather seats it is. <laughs> black leather seats it is. And we have the upgraded sound system already. Right? We have that, the Revel Ultima 3D. And we have the Sync 3. We have the voice-activated touchscreen navigation. Do we want the second row bench? Nope. We'll take the captain's chairs. Let's move on to the summary, shall we? Okay, here we are. <clears throat> We've made it to the end. Uh, this vehicle has cost $68,220. It started life at $56,190. I like the Lincoln Aviator. I like Lincoln products. Actually, I forgot to even mention that uh, I did a building price of the 2019 Lincoln Nautilus Reserve, and I did a building price of the 2019 Land Rover Discovery, which is a direct competitor to this vehicle, the Land Rover Discovery is. I'm going to put these links up, but you know what? I'm going to put these links up way earlier. Hopefully, you'll see them. At any rate... I like the vehicle. I don't like the way they have some of those packages bundled, man. They're really expensive. I hope they sort of change that before these get before these hit the showroom floor. Other than that, I really like the Aviator. I, and like I said, I like the Lincoln product. So I'm going to wrap this video up. If you've watched this video from front to back, you're awesome. Thank you for watching. I really, 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 really appreciate it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to let you go. You have a nice day, and I'll see you on the very next video.